I want to share with you a story. A story that is the most painful story I have to tell. The most painful experience um, I had ever felt in my entire life. It's regarding my son, a very serious health scare situation and reality creation, quantum jumping. So it began one evening. My son was having some major stomach pain. I thought for sure it was um, probably appendicitis kind of based on what he was saying it was hurting. It was about 11 p.m. at night. We rushed him to, my, my son's dad and I rushed him to the hospital, um, kind of a smaller hospital. I figured, well, okay, if it's appendicitis, I'm not gonna go downtown. I'll go to the hospital just a, five more minutes away that will probably be uh, less busy so they can, you know, get to him quick. So we go, um, <coughs> excuse me, they took some blood and did some tests and an ultrasound on his stomach and discovered he had something called intussusception, which is where his, um, like small intestine kind of goes into the larger intestine where they connect and it can be caused uh, we weren't sure why but they said it can be caused by um, a virus he'd been really sick he's four years old and his name is Corbin and he's in a lot of pain the doctors came and told us that they found something in his blood work. Uh, they said that he had 21 platelets and he's supposed to have 150, which means his blood cannot form clots like at all. He would potentially, it could be really bad. And they said, the doctor was really kind and he just kept saying, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Good thing we caught it before something worse happened and he'd need transfusions or something. Anyways, he said, um, well, let me, let me backtrack a minute. So we got the news. And as the doctors were doing their thing, we had a bit of time. I was having to be quite strong for my son at that moment um, and not really, I was definitely choking back tears, but I try not to let it uh, scare him and try to be strong for him. So I excused myself when I knew I had a little bit of time to my car to sit and try and process what I had just been told. Um, they said they were referring us to oncology and um, that specialists were going to be waiting at the, the hospital downtown where they can better take care of him and what needs to be done. Um, they said for the intussusception, he would need a procedure done, potentially a surgery. But at this point, with the platelet count, neither of those are possible. They didn't even want to give him pain meds due to the fact that they could just not stop bleeding in his IV. Um, and so life changed at that moment, big time. He said, it's very likely your child will be admitted and um, they have to get this blood thing figured out before anything can happen. And it's urgent and he said you know we're gonna wrap up this paperwork and uh, and then we need you to get in your car and rush as fast as you can downtown and they'll be waiting for you for your son so anyways I had a moment I excused myself to my car um 
to let it out and kind of let my pain come up. And I felt very powerless and I felt very hopeless. And that, like, how do I help my kid in this situation? Because there's nothing I can do. <clears throat> but then I got to thinking, what do I know that can that I can do? Like all I kept thinking is, this isn't a reality that I want to live in. This isn't the reality I want for my son. This reality cannot happen. This cannot be my reality. So. I was like, I had a moment to kind of gather myself. I go back inside and then we get him ready and get him in the car and start heading downtown. As all of us kind of in shock, it's about 2 a.m. now at this point. And as I'm driving on the interstate, I realize what do I what do I do when I want to change things in my life uh, for the past about two and a half years I've lived in breeze everything reality creation between the meditations and uh, listening to pretty much every author podcast lecture I can um, a lot of stuff to do with like Nettle, uh, Neville Goddard um, I would say really, uh, that has to do with changing your reality, reality shifting and quantum jumping is a, a thing I've util utilized many times in the past and it has worked. Incredible things have happened in my life of which I probably will share someday. This story that I am wanting to share is something that has been gnawing at me ever since this happened about two months ago every day I wake up and I'm like okay maybe today's the day I'll share it so I'm... but today's the day <laughs> it's, it's this scares me to talk about so I'm driving on the interstate and there is a lot of emotional charge to this situation so coming up with energy for this quantum jump, it wasn't easy to find. So I did some deep breathing. I got the chi, kind of prana energy in my stomach. And then I, I pushed it out. It, the more you care about a quantum jump type of thing, it uh, can be very powerful. And I could feel radiating from me the current reality changes. Now, what does God, Neville Goddard teach next? Live in the wish fulfilled. So, I got myself from a point of utter dismay, powerlessness, and, and through this visualization and utilizing these tools that I have acquired these past few years, I got myself to the point where I felt, I felt comforted that the, the tests were wrong. My son is just fine. There's nothing wrong with his blood work. He's, he's perfectly healthy. And I felt better. I did. And, and I, and I believed it. Because I knew this is the only way I can really change this. I have to believe it. This has to, I have to be so convinced if I want this to come to pass. Um, and I was able to convince myself this. And I, and I did feel a, an a, immense amount of comfort. So we get to the hospital. It's about, yeah, maybe 3 a.m. or so rush him in and I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling grounded. And the first thing I said to the doctor is that, hey, those blood tests are wrong. You, you, you gotta retest them. That's, they're wrong. And so she did, that's what the first thing to do is take his blood to go get tested. Um, and 
we're about to start a procedure, which ironically enough, the I guess the doctor didn't even know about his platelets. So that's really scary. So if that was his reality, um, something that doctor should have known about before that procedure. Eh? Um, anyway, so just as we're there, he's about to start, we get the news about the blood results, the test results. He's perfectly fine. <laughs> they were wrong. <sighs> he wasn't a reality. I did change it. Or they were wrong the whole time, I don't know. <laughs> but I was grateful for it. That's all I could say. So, yeah, the procedure, things, it's very painful for him. But things went well. Things were better for two days. And then he got the same pain again. Now, this is a story about how your belief can change reality and heal your body. So, his son, my son's dad, dad wasn't around at that time. He was actually out in the mountains. I was unable to uh, reach him. So it was again, 11 at night. Um, same pains, I knew it was the exact same thing. So I rushed him to the hospital. I said, okay, this is happening again. And beginning with when the pain first started, all I kept saying to my son, because all I cared about at that moment is I don't want him to be in pain anymore. This child does not deserve to hurt, to feel this amount of pain. It's incredibly painful, I guess, <laughs> clearly. Um, I just kept saying, Corbin, as soon as you get, it's gonna hurt, you ha you're gonna have to get another needle in your arm, but as soon as you get the medicine in your arm, your stomach will never, ever, ever hurt like this again. I promise you. We just have to get to the hospital. You got this. You're going to be okay. As soon as we get that medicine in you, everything, it's not going to hurt at all. You, it's, Yeah. And, and he trusted me and he believed me. So we get to the hospital and he gets his IV in. And then for some pain meds. So he's feeling better. And then a couple minutes later, we go upstairs to, and he was in a, a huge amount of pain, by the way. They were trying to give him the IV with um, the pain meds while he was having a intussusception, uh, that it goes in and out kind of thing. It doesn't just stay in, but when it goes in, it's crippling pain. Um, so they're trying to get that in as he's just like hardly able to move. But then he, it worked immediately, phenomenally. So we go upstairs to the ultrasound. She puts it on in and it's retracted. It's back out. She said it was a little inflamed, she could tell. He had been, it had been happening that night. It was the same thing, the intussusception. And then we go downstairs, kind of wait. Um, what we're waiting for actually, actually is for um, the pediatric surgeons to come to perform an actual surgery, an like invasive surgery that is to, I'm not sure do what, something with the, to fix it. They're on their way. It's about probably 3 a.m. at this point. Anywho. Time goes on, we're still waiting. And it never happened again. As soon as he got the medicine, he believed me and trusted me enough. <laughs> and it still hasn't happened since. That's kind of why I hesitate in like, sharing this experience for so long is, I, mean, I, I believe in thought. Our thoughts are powerful. And I didn't want to share this with the world because I don't want these thoughts really around my kid. I didn't, I didn't tell too many people about this. And, and actually I really didn't, I, I told my parents, but that's it. I didn't tell anybody when I had heard the news of the potential cancer type of situation, the horrible blood count. 
I was like, wait, I don't think I want to broad. I don't want to broadcast this. I don't want people thinking that, oh, your poor sick kid, he must hurt so bad. I don't want those thoughts out there. Um, anywho, I, my son believed me enough and he trusted me and he believed that as soon as he was strong and tough and got that IV in his arm, the pain med, but I, I pretty much, I was planning, I was just saying like, as soon as that, you won't feel pain anymore. Yeah. You're going to have to have surgery. It's going to suck, but like, you don't want to tell him that. I just wanted to focus on, okay, the pain's going to go away. Right. But he believed it so hardcore that as soon as he was tough and brave, got that IV and the needle in that it would all be better. It did. It was incredible. And we stayed there for observation for several hours. And I asked the doctor, I was like, well, maybe it's still happening. And he's like, no, the amount of pain meds I gave him, if it was still happening, he would, he would be curled up in a ball again. Absolutely. There's, there's not a chance it's happening anymore. So they sent us home and said, no, see what happens. I hope it doesn't happen again. And even if it doesn't, we're not gonna talk about that. Anyways, I just wanted to share this story. It's powerful. That was the scariest eight, eight hours of my life, entire life. Oh, that was the worst feeling ever. I, I am grateful for this experience, however, because it's given me a lot of perspective. It's given me a lot of strength and it's given me a lot of belief in my own power and, and powers that be, the powers of the universe and the powers that we have to create our realities. And I fully believe that our frames are so strong as parents, especially with young children, we can pull them into these other realities we can change theirs. I quantum jumped us into a different reality. At least that's what I believe. Because this story is odd. He was even looking really pale at first, when we were, when we first got the news, I mean, he was in a lot of pain, but he didn't look that good either. <laughs> this is the first time I remember this, actually. <sighs> and yeah, when we got to the next hospital, I looked at him, he actually, he looked healthier. That was my, um, what I told the doctor, I was like, look at him, he looks, he's too healthy to have that. That's not possible. Can we, can we retest him? The blood tests are wrong. <sighs> Thanks for letting me share my story. I hope that if any way it could help anybody in the world, I don't know. But I just knew I had to share it. And I'm glad I finally did. <laughs>